you can see, we're going to be talking trades. Yes, trades, 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 trades. Uh, just like the most likely trades to go down uh, so far, as we know of, in this year's NBA season. Obviously, coming off of the big time, big time, big time James Harden trade, we're going to be talking about some other superstars, role players, key guys. We're going to be also looking like they're getting the boot, the boot, the boot as well. Also, if you didn't know, yes, I did upload yesterday. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying, oh, I'm going to take a break, oh, I'm going to take a break, and then I just don't take a break. You guys know I just love doing this. I love creating content for you guys. I love the interaction with you guys. I just really love you guys so much for, you know, the 5,000 of you who have subscribed and whoever even just clicks on this video, likes the video. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I did upload a video yesterday doing another writing video talking about the top 10 number one picks of all time in NBA history. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, leave a like on the video if you like this video or get whatever you want out of it. Also, subscribe to the channel. We are growing and growing and growing so much and hopefully very fast. And yeah, with that being said, without more being said, let's jump into tonight's video. Video, 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 video. Okay, I actually have an article pulled up for, you know, some names that we can just jog my memory with. Also, comment down below maybe some players on your favorite team, players around the league you would just like to see traded, some good trades that you would just want to see, like a fantasy style trade or just any type of trade you want to talk about. Leave it down in the comment section down below. We'll have a little talk about it. But this is the top the 10 NBA players likeliest to be traded next. So very intriguing. Um, we can all talk about the big time names that we can already think of at the top of our head. Um, I guess we can talk about the James Harden trade like right now, obviously, because that's the obviously the one that actually did happen. Um, I think the trade was for, it was James Harden for uh, Karis LeVert, who is now being traded to uh, the Pacers for Victor Oladipo. So technically, Harden got traded for Victor Oladipo. But yeah, Victor Oladipo is now in Houston. We have Karis LeVert in Indiana. And I think Houston has, dude, like eight first round picks, seven first round picks, something crazy like that. Um, in my opinion, uh, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to tank. They're trying to pull a Oklahoma City Thunder, which I very much understand why. Definitely building through the draft is something you want to do, especially with a rebuilding team. It gives you a greater chance of snagging a, you know, very, very, very good potential player. Now, with that also being said, is that worth more than, say, if the Philadelphia 76ers offered Ben Simmons? Now, if the Philadelphia 76ers did not at all offer Ben Simmons in the trade package, and I totally understand that the Rockets for trading for, you know, Karis LeVert or someone like that, but, 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 there were a lot of sort of trade packages being sort of rumored and talked about. Uh, during this time period and it seems like the Rockets had Ben Simmons in the bag like they were going to get Ben Simmons if they wanted Ben Simmons but they wanted uh, Maxi, they wanted Thibault, they wanted Picks like they were trying to get a lot out of James Harden for that sort of Philadelphia trade and I think they just offered or asked for way too much and then Philadelphia sort of pulled out and didn't want to do it anymore and then they just took the next best trade which was uh, the Nets obviously with Karis LeVert and the Pigs. I've said this before with the Thunder trading away Chris Paul and trading away all their players for Pigs. That's cool. Like that's fine if you want to do that but in my opinion that is going to bite you in the butt. You will become the next you know, team that will just be tanking for the next five to seven years and still maybe getting absolutely nothing and hoping and praying for a good shot. I mean, you look at New Orleans. New Orleans got lucky. They got very lucky getting that overall pick, getting Zion. They got very lucky and also getting the boatload of guys for trading away Anthony Davis. They got Ingram, Lonzo. They got Josh Hart. They got a boatload of picks. 
I just feel like the, the Rockets got fleeced from their trade, uh, 100%. Uh, you look at it from the Nets' point of view, they lost all their depth. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie's out for, I think, the entire year. They no longer have Karis LeVert. They no longer have of, of Jared Allen, who, if you didn't know, Jared Allen's now going to the Cavaliers. And, bro, the Cavaliers, I think, are going to make the playoffs. It's just, in my opinion, the Rockets got fleeced. They should have gotten more for James Harden. Not as in picks or anything like that, but they got Victor Oladipo and a bunch of picks. <laughs> I think I would have rather had Ben Simmons, maybe uh, a, a not-so-great player and picks than uh, Victor Oladipo and all the picks in the world. Like I, I don't think they're going to be really worth anything. So, Anyways, <laughs> okay, I sort of have a list here, and I'm just going to go down the list, basically, and just naming them off, obviously, the big boy. Uh, Bradley Beal, uh, obviously seeing James Harden leave to the East, and the East just getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. It seems like now, I think the tides have turned a little bit. I think that the scales have tipped towards the East being the stronger conference. They're definitely top-heavy, obviously, with, again, the Nets, the Bucks, the Sixers, the Celtics. I think they're a little bit more top-heavy. I mean, Sure, the West still has the Lakers and the Clippers. After that, like, the West isn't the West anymore. I mean, the Nuggets are still good, but their record doesn't really show it, so you're like, eh, maybe. Um, some other teams just aren't playing to their best capability, and in the East, it's looking like they're playing a little better than the, the West are this year, so um, maybe does that mean, hey, if I'm Bradley Beal, I want to go out West, I want to go to one of these major teams, I want to, you know, compete. Is it, you know, I'm going to be complacent to stay here, wait for something to happen. Uh, you know, maybe he just likes being in Washington. Maybe he just likes to be a good basketball player. Like, maybe he doesn't care about accolades. Maybe he just wants to play basketball and make millions of dollars, which, you know, I, I would totally be fine with it as well. So, um, that's definitely a big possibility. I definitely would see Bradley Beal going to either A, um, I mean, Miami, maybe. I think Miami would be a good place. You can trade Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, some picks as well for, for Bradley Beal. That's a good rebuilding piece for for Washington. Um, I'm trying to think who else would be good ones. Uh, I hear all the time about, um, like, the Lakers, which that's just never going to happen. I mean, if anything, you can try to get Bradley to announce, hey, I want to get traded and I want to go to the Lakers then that can be negotiated because it's a little bit of, you know, you get some, uh, oh, what's it called? Like negotiation pieces to be like, hey, he wants to come here. Let's just help each other out here because you can trade like what, Kuzma, um, Dale and Orton Tucker. You can trade probably, I'm sure they have a draft pick somewhere they could throw in there. Uh, maybe you have to throw in like Caruso or someone else to get Bradley. I think that'd definitely be worth it in my opinion. Uh, that's definitely a big possibility, but I think definitely Miami would be probably be number one. Then, yeah, probably the Lakers. And then, if I can think of another team. A team that needs a shooting guard really badly that can be contending. I mean, I guess you could probably say, like, Philly or something like that, but they don't really have any assets unless you want to give up Ben Simmons, which you talk here about trading away Aaron Gordon, likely to get traded. I think Orlando, right now, they're definitely probably trying to stick everything together still because they are playing very well this year. I think they're still top five in the East right now in ranking, so... And this is even without one of their best players, uh, Jonathan Isaac. So I think this is definitely a team that you will, they want to stick with until Jonathan Isaac comes back. And then if him and Aaron Gordon aren't playing well together, then you get rid of Aaron Gordon. Um, I think that's definitely what I would do. Um, a team I could really see get... To, get uh, man, Gordon in. I'm trying to think. Um, maybe Denver. If Denver somehow got something to trade for. I mean, obviously, they're not going to get rid of, like, Michael Porter Jr. for Aaron Gordon. That's a dumb trade, for sure. But maybe, like, Will Barton. Maybe you could trade away, like, Will Barton, Bull Bulls, and Picks. Maybe Archie Hampton, the rookie they just had, they just signed. That's pretty intriguing, uh, definitely, to get Aaron Gordon there. I think, Or maybe even just Paul Millsap. You can trade Paul Millsap. It'd give the Magic veteran leadership for playoff moments because they're probably going to make the playoffs again this year. Uh, and then Denver, you get a nice piece to sort of still build around with Jamal Murray. He's not even his prime yet. Jokic is maybe just now entering his prime. Then you get another youngish style player who can still participate very well. And Aaron Gordon with Michael Porter Jr. That's looking like a pretty good squad. So that's definitely not looking pretty bad. Um, another team, maybe like uh, Minnesota. I think if Minnesota can maybe get rid of maybe one more first round pick. I know uh, the Golden State Warriors already hold their first round pick for this upcoming draft, but maybe they can get rid of our future one. Then you have D'Lo, Anthony Edwards, Aaron Gordon, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, Malik Beasley. Like, that team's looking really good if you can 
need a power forward uh, very badly, like again, like the Wolves, um, the, the maybe the uh, Denver Nuggets as well. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, you could even play them in, in, in Dallas if you have, you know, Randall at the four, Kristaps at the five. That's not too bad. That's definitely a good player to play alongside them. Or again, I think they would probably just play it very well, just stay on the Knicks and hoping and praying a free agent shows up one day. Rose, yeah, Derek Rose definitely needs to get out of there for sure. Him and Blake. I think Blake is probably going to be on this list as well. Um, for Derek Rose, the only thing I could really see happening for Derek Rose is a buyout. I don't think anyone's going to take on that contract he has right now. I think it's like, if I remember right from 2K, it's like a $17, $18 million contract uh, for this year. I don't think anyone's going to want to match a contract for that for Derek Rose. I think if anything, he'll get bought out for like 15 mil, like get 15 mil back, and then he'll sign a team for, for a veteran minimum. So that in my idea would be like the situation that would happen. So if that did happen and he was a free agent, I think he would probably sign with New York. I mean, not New York, Brooklyn. I think he'd probably sign with like a Brooklyn team, a team who desperately needs, uh, you know, ball movement off the bench. He would definitely be the sixth man, obviously with Carousel Vert. I mean, not Carousel Vert, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie being out for the entire year. He can sign there for one year, win a chip, finally get the sort of accolade that he's always been chasing on a great team. I think that, I think if that did happen, I think Brooklyn is the number one. I think, um, oh, I'm trying to think of another team. Maybe Milwaukee, off the bench for Milwaukee would be another good one for him. And then maybe, man, I can't think of a playoff team that needs like a, like a starting point guard, because definitely Derek Rose can still be like a starting point guard for sure, 100%. Um, I'm not even really entirely sure. I don't want to say like all the Clippers or all the Lakers because you know you already have Schroeder, you have Caruso, and even for the, the Clippers they have Reggie Jackson and Patrick Beverly. They don't really need a point guard like that, but I think Brooklyn is is definitely the number one spot for him because uh, I don't think anyone wants to trade for Derrick Rose. I think that might be too expensive and not really worth it. Um, let's see what else is on here. I think I saw yeah yeah Blake Griffin yeah. Um, I think Blake again might be one of those guys where he's either just gonna have to wait to get bought out or wait for his contract to get over because I don't think anyone's going to want to try to max contra and max uh, match 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 contracts in order to get Blake 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 Griffin Griffin. So again, if that did happen, if it got bought out, I think again, I think any free agent right now is going to try to get to Brooklyn. I know there's like Rodney Hollis Jefferson, uh, Isaiah Thomas. Like, a lot of these, like, still players who could still play in the NBA are going to try to get a tryout with Brooklyn at some point in time because they are praying to get some good bench pieces. They're not, like, I'm not saying anyone on their bench right now is bad. Like, they still have Jeff Green and players like that, but I think they need a little bit more oomph off the bench. So, um, if Blake Griffin did get, you know, if he got bought out, I think definitely Brooklyn would be a place for him to go. Um, I think, um, man, who else would be good with Maybe like Philly. I think Philly with Blake would be good because he's actually a little bit more of a stretch for now than that, you know, that big dominant dunking sort of pack, pack to the basket type player. Like before, he's more of a face up for now with the three game, uh, which is good. I think it's definitely good for his game, sort of longevity wise. Um, I'm trying to think of other teams as well. Maybe even like a Golden State. <laughs> Maybe even like Golden State. Uh, that'd be super duper crazy. I'm just trying to think of some other like crazy sort of things, but. Again, most of these guys are really, really, really just going to try to go over to them. Oh, Boston would be good for Blake Griffin. I know for a while, Boston, I think, had their eye on Blake Griffin for a hot second as well. So I definitely don't think that'd be such a bad sort of uh, case scenario for them, in my opinion. Right here, they have P.J. Tucker from the Houston Rockets as well, trying to get out. Um, do I think he'll get traded? I actually don't think he's going to... Oh, actually... I'm about like 60-40 right now on P.J. Tucker getting traded or not. Uh, I think he probably likes being in Houston. I think he likes his Houston contract. I don't think he's going to get bought out or traded or really anything like that. Plus, I think he's on an expiring contract already this season. If not, it's next season. So, I mean, if they did trade him, I think they could probably get some good assets back in him. Uh, I'm trying to think because he definitely plays. He can definitely play the four. He can play the three. He can guard, you know, one through four for sure. Sometimes even one through five, especially some teams that are out there. Their centers are super short, so I think I'll definitely, 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 definitely help that out a lot. So 
kids, especially in Toronto. But Kyle Lowry, do not be afraid of seeing a Kyle Lowry trade offer or buyout or something like that. Um, as we've seen, Toronto plays really well. And that's not the problem for Toronto. It's like finishing games is a problem and a struggle for Toronto somehow. They don't really have a closer. They don't really have, you know, an offensive go-to guy. Obviously, Siakam is good, but we've seen him on back-to-back games miss game winners against Portland and the Golden State back-to-back. They went to Siakam. He missed both, and that's pretty upsetting if your best player can't do that for you. So, I mean, if trading Lowry can get you a younger asset that could potentially get to there, I think you should do that. And not even saying, like, Kyle Lowry can't do that for you. Uh, but Kyle Lowry's old. <laughs> Kyle Lowry is on a big deal. So if you can trade that for some sort of expiring deal or something like that, I think you should do it. Now, obviously, would it be nice to have Kyle Lowry? I think I'm trying to remember if Kyle Lowry's on an expiring deal. If Kyle Lowry's on an expiring deal, you don't do it. You resign Kyle Lowry for a very, very, very much cheaper contract than he's on right now. Because I think right now he's on like a what, like an almost thirty million dollar contract, which definitely isn't worth it for Kyle Lowry. No offense, I still love Kyle Lowry, but definitely not worth that much money. Um, so if you can do that, I think you should. But if it's a, I think it's a, if it is a two year deal, I think you have to get rid of it. Because right now Toronto's in like this very scary scenario where they could become like a very purgatory team where they're just stuck, being stuck in the middle, and it's not a place you want to be. Um, and is that because of the sort of offensive power they don't have? I think yes. And I think if getting that in some sort of acquisition will be helpful, I think you should. So uh, don't be afraid of, of Kyle Lowry leaving. Uh, if it was to a team, I mean, hey, I think the Lakers trading like Caruso and again, um, some other sorts of players to get him on the team, I think they should do that. Uh, keep Dennis Schroeder off the bench with Montrez and you can start Kyle Lowry and that starting lineup would be pretty awesome. Um, especially, again, with the firepower of the Nets now. Someone has to match up. Someone has to be able to stand up that team. And right now, the Lakers are close, but I, I don't think they would be able to stop that team. I mean, if you look at their bench for the Nets, it's trash, but bro, we all know how free agency works. Like, there's, I, I just named off a bunch of like key free agents that can play right now that aren't even on an NBA team right now. If they get signed to them, bro, that team is looking really good, and all it takes is one or two guys off the bench, and they're totally fine, because <laughs> their starting five is already killer with uh, Kyrie, James, KD. Uh, they have Joe Harris at the three, actually, KD at the four, and they have DeAndre Jordan at the five. Like, that starting five is hands down the best in the league by far. Then maybe, like I said before, they signed like an Isaiah Thomas, uh, 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 um, an RHJ, uh, a player gets bought out here, a player gets bought out there, something happens, boom, and they're unbeatable. So I think a team has to stand up to them, and it's the Lakers. They got to load up on firepower. If it's the Clippers, they got to load up on firepower. If it's another team in the East, someone's got to make a move. Someone has to make a move. That's why I was talking about with Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal can tip the scales if he, if he goes to, like, um, like a Celtics team. Maybe you trade it like Kemba for Bradley Beal. I don't know. Just something like that. Uh, somehow, I think Bradley Beal's the, the sort of lost star. Uh, that can be helpful for a team to sort of help balance out the NBA again because, bro, did, we, we, we were just loving and raving about, oh my god, the NBA, it's back. Every team has two, and you know, all the really good teams in the NBA, I should say, have two go-to guys. Everyone's sort of in this good sort of role right now. You know, you don't know who's going to make it out of the East Conference. It's so close. And then, 
these back-to-back -back games and playing a game every other day. I mean, sure, in the NBA season with 82 games, they don't even do that. They have, like, some days, two days off, three days, three days off. It's not every day or every other day. It's just, I think it's too crazy. I think it's too much. I think they should have totally just eliminated back-to-backs, and if anything, it should have been every other day have a game or every couple days have a game. Like, I think they sort of, they, they totally rushed this, and I think the NBA did a very bad job, at least in my opinion. So, uh, there's entries going on, there's trades going on, uh, complete chaos. There, there might be a stoppage in this season, we don't know. Uh, the NBA is just totally crazy right now, but we have NFL football coming this weekend. I might do a video on that, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I also have, I also have, oh my god, guys, I have such a good idea for a roleplay video. You guys have no idea. I need to, like, think of, like, a script. I need to, like, do stuff for it. I need, it's going to be very good. So you guys need to look out for this next roleplay I'm going to be doing. It's going to be awesome. So with that being said, that's going to be for me, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below some players you want to see traded, players you want to see traded to, like, again, Bradley Beal, 